Wardy, he's the quiet one really. Uh, he's the quiet one. And Berto storms in. Wardy comes in. He just gets himself settled, and then six o'clock they're off. Yeah. No news overnight. Um, we have to make something up. I'm a hairdresser. Really? I am. Uh, I actually still do a bit of hairdressing. Do you have a mix of the uh, no, I've never cut hair and presented at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it, though, Go on. <coughs> Go on. Hello. Oh, fabulous. Isn't that good? Can't be doing with DJs. They're all very sort of up their own box. <laughs> Only people who are not in the business are funnier. Look, look, can you see? What does it say on the, uh, on his, uh, thing? Well, it works sorry. for DHL. Oh, <laughs> so, can you imagine if we had Piccadilly 1152 tattooed on your buttock? <laughs> Could you imagine? I bet yes. Mike Sweeney'd have it done. There's when I first started here, I was, I was on late night, and I was doing this phone in and nude bathing had just come into being on Brighton Beach. And I did this phone in and this guy came on, on the air, and he said, uh, we were talking about it, and I said, what's good, what do you think's good about being on Brighton Beach for nude bathing? And he said, you could sit all day. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really thought that was the end of my job, to be quite honest. The only trouble with somebody swearing on the air, what it does, it triggers off. Yeah. To, for other idiots to come on. Yeah, yeah. You'll be inundated for ages then with other idiots who think they can get away with it. Look at the phones. You see the phones? Is it a boxer? No. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Are you falling for that great impression? Yeah. Just, you are. Who, who is the impression? Who Eddie is it? Eddie Stobart. Eddie Stobart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing like Eddie Stobart. Listen, I thought you said it was fantastic it and is. memorable and listen, everybody would know it. To Hello. Who it is, oh, he's ball. Oh, he's taking his ball back now. I'm I not playing no more. Listen closely. Go on. Hello. Well, there you uh, go. No. A22, the Piccadilly Eye in the Sky, Smith Knight Fay Eye in the Sky with Joe. How's things? Is there, I missed your impression. What was it? Oh, it was, it was going on. I'm strangling myself here. No, go on. See if she can spot it. Go on. Are you ready? <clears throat> okay. Okay, here we go. Hello. Who was that, Joe? Well known character from a film. Who was it, Joe? Hello. Hello. Kermit! <laughs> 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 Investigators trying to find out how Princess Diana's car crashed in a Paris underpass have questioned the only survivor for a second time. I think we regard ourselves as a good quality tabloid news service. Um, we can't be too stuffy. We can, we, we're not Radio 4's well, yeah. news. At the same time, we, we don't want to go too down market because we do have, you know, an intelligent listenership. More on those stories at four o'clock on Piccadilly 11.52. Okay. Done. You know that people are listening carefully because you're doing it for the first time. And when, you, when you're reading live news bulletins or, or producing live sport programming, they're bound to be cock-ups. So they, don't, they want to see if you're any good or not, really. So, yeah. But it's a relief now it's done, and the next one will be easier. Uh, Brian Clark, one of our sports journalists, was following a, a rugby league game, and was sitting in his car, and he leant on um, his horn in the car, and all the team trooped off the field. We had Jamie Bollock play for, <laughs> for Bolt on Tuesday night. I'll admit to that one. <laughs> I had West Ham play without Dicks for the last half an hour. How's it going? Big first one. Oh. Best music. It was all right, but no wrapping. I've suddenly forgot my out and had to search hurriedly for a piece of paper. Yes, yeah, it's very good. Um, well, 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 well. And it's like, oh, oh, ah, ah, oh, oh, ah. <laughs> With me, I have Mark Benison, ladies and gentlemen, who uh, presents our mid-morning show, 10 to 1. The man who is, he's our warm-up man. This is Mark Benison, ladies and gentlemen. Am I the best warm-up man? He's the best, he's the best he's, in the business. He's just the best. Good morning, this is Mark Benson. We're doing the Manchester show. The fun starts at 12 noon with Adam Cole, and I'll see you down there later on this afternoon. I get more nervous going on and doing a road show in front of a couple of hundred people or a couple of thousand people than I do doing this show with several hundred thousand people because obviously they can see you there. Um, you're very exposed. If you, if you know Mark Benson's programme, you know just this, um, a feature every day called The Sad Sentimental Real Life True Story. And it's basically where a listener <laughs> writes in and pours out the traumas and tragedies dun, dun, that they're going dun, through dun, in their life dun, dun, at dun, any one time. Do you ever look thing. at those Thank letters you. and actually Thank feel emotionally amused and have a good laugh at them? Never. 
This is Real Life Stories from Key 103. This letter that we're going to do today will probably turn out to be the longest letter that we've ever done, but it's worth doing because this one lady, her name's Denise. Real Life Stories is working really well, and, and, and the uh, listeners are phoning up and asking for the ones they want to hear again. This one's exceptionally long today, actually. Don't tell the boss, it's about ten minutes long. When Jeff lived with me, we were going home one morning, and uh, we were coming to work one morning. He lived with you. And you know, multiple wives. No, yeah, in a, sort of a, in, a co in a comedy sense. And uh, Jeff actually cried at one of your real life stories. It's very sad. So now, at the age of 37, I've started to rebuild my life. And now you know what I mean by happy ish. All right, then, thank you for that. See you later. Bye bye. That was the boss saying he liked it. You know, um, you know that you've done the right thing. I mean, that, that was kind of a sort of editorial decision. We have a strict format which we have to stick to. And. You know, most of the time we do, 99% of the time, but occasionally you must form out and they're fine as long as you've got a good reason. Yeah, as long as you've got a very good reason. What was it that made you interested in radio in the, fir in the first instance? Why did you want to do it? I wanted um, a job in the music industry, but I knew that I didn't have any, any musical ability whatsoever. I think that I would like to have been in a band. I think we all, we all love music, we all, we're all air guitarists, we all sing along to the records. I did a rap once on the air, it just came to me, I said, DJ, MV, in a place to be on Keyboard 3. Mark is everything I aspire to be. He's very muscular. Uh, very firm and tanned. He's a consummate professional and more, more than anything he cares for this business and he cares for the listeners. He's my hero. Today's best music, this is Key 103 Manchester. Don't forget by the way tonight the Manchester Storm are in action and uh, they're taking on the Cardiff Devils at home at the Storm Shelter. So we say good luck uh, to the Manchester Storm proudly supported by Ice Cool Key 103. What are your turn-ons and turn-offs in a woman, Benna? Your turn-offs? Do you know I can't, I can't bear women with facial hair and you see a lot of it these days. I've written it something the kids are eating. Yeah. So <laughs> birds with, uh, with you know, facial, facial hair, hair. moustaches, sideburns are out. So people in circuses, bearded ladies, they've been All out that. So it rules out Joe Blakeway then, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just jealous because it's taken me three days just to go to that. But, you know, I, I don't like when we're... So, so turn-ons then, what would you go for? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit predictable with that, you know? I mean, I, I just... I, like, I, I do, I like Bimboe. Piccadilly has two radio stations, but only one big boss. I'd like to tell you about my... Feel the power of Piccadilly Key 103 FM with the Afternoon Fun Show. your chance to win colour tickets on Piccadilly Key 103. <coughs> I'd like to... Next, more tips on feeling fit and looking good. Piccadilly 11.52 AM. Starmy music on the best day. Excuse me. I'd like to... Piccadilly Key 103 and Piccadilly 11.52. Quality speaks for itself. Manchester's best music. We were talking to Eunice. Now, Eunice, it, we'll just explain again. People, uh, some people came around to your house, and actually, one of them distracted you, and somebody else actually pushed their way into your house. Paid attention, but we just threw them on the bed, but they took me money. So you're having real problems at the moment, being able to settle again. You're very nervy, and you feel sick and stressed out, and all that the rest. Was terrible. The, the city's at. Uh, is a place where there are lots of people knocking around, but if you live on your own, it's like the loneliest place in the world. I mean, You're terrible. I walk queer at the best of times with this paralysed leg. Mm. It's almost like, um, like the confessional box, really, because people tell you that a lot of the times, you know, they'll phone in and they forget that they're on a phone on a radio station. They just think it's a one-to-one. -one. What are your neighbours like? Well, I don't know them on Bethel because I can't work out properly. And some of the stuff they come out with is absolutely incredible. I can't give you anything for right. your education because you're on Valium. But I said I've been on them 23 years, so we're not doing much good, are we? You've been on Valium for 23 years? Yes. You've got. To tell him. I'll, tell him. I'll give him. What I'll do is I'll get in touch with somebody either tonight or tomorrow, and. If he wants, I'll pass the number on to them, and they'll phone him from, from one of the, the transsexual sort of like support groups. Okay. All right. See what he says. If he doesn't, I'll phone him. Well, it depends on yourself. You don't sound like the type of person that's going to be beaten easily. So. Well, this is what the police woman said. Right. I kept filling up, and she said, "Have a good cry." I said, "No, I'm not a cry, me." Are you not? Me husband used to well, say. Well, you, you know what they say. Have a good cry, and you'll pee less. So you know. I'm not, I'm incontinent. <laughs> 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 I bloody won't. Thanks, Umberto. Okay.
day, Eunice. But I love your programme on a Sunday. Do you know you want to see charm the birds out of the trees? All right, sweetheart, no, you take right. care. Uh, Trev, I couldn't disagree with you. It's not got any viciousness or violence in him at all. Well, Brian, if you don't want it, what the hell are you ringing me up for? Tell me you've got his watch then, you sad donkey. He's completely mad. And when I see my boss tomorrow, I'm going to smack him in the gob. But he's utterly professional. Uh, can we congratulate uh, Flo Halliday from uh, Pendlebury? Uh, Flo won 1,259 quid on Piccadilly 11 for you uh, earlier this morning. James is borderline. Flo, think of all those drinks you could buy me with £1,259.47. <laughs> the front for the rudest man in Britain. Probably, yeah. Oh, well, James. Adrian, what on earth can you have to say to me? Well, they've been ringing him for years, even before I, before I started here. Right, I mean, it's a pretty big night, I think. He's, he's had people that remember him from the 70s, that used to ring him in the 70s. You know I was waiting to be the neurosurgeon? And there they all are again, ringing him up. About your head? Well. Yeah. What left of it? Uh, well, not much from the way you talk, Adrian. Go on. I didn't really have anything good tonight to get a go at, apart from the first hour when we had Trev on. These girls, James, are the kind of girls that drop them at the back of pubs. But you can tell them, James. You can tell them they're laughing and joking as they're going out to the theatre. Not in a million years. Like, uh, not in off. a million years. Joke. I think the answer to the excess of time given to the likes of Trevor and Jerry is that you need them as agitators to boost your ratings and encourage more phone calls. Yes, you get on bigots to up those audience figures, don't you, James? Down the pan. Down the pan. I'm very, I'm very proud of down the pan. Because the, the whole way it works with the gossip, with the, with the mechanic, with people fighting, the really good prizes and stuff. Oh, Titanic film is going to be screened in Britain before it's released in America, so we're working on the punchline for that. Top comedian on the phone, Sammy Smile. Hello, Sammy. Oh, hello, Spencer. Very top comedian. Uh, really sad guy, actually. Just rang me up once. Follow me about. Uh, I've been decorating the house recently, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I've just done the family room entirely in tartan. In tartan? Yeah. First, first thing that happened was my son's pet chameleon had a nervous breakdown, you know. Thank oh, you, Sammy! Get off the phone. Goodbye! Goodbye! No change there, still unfunny. First on is Darren Adams in Lee. Hello, Darren. Good morning, Spence. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Good. Uh, it's the VH1 Fashion Prize, or the uh, Spence Fashion Disaster in the envelopes this morning, which is some of my old clothes. Which would you rather have? Uh, I've seen your clothes. I think I go to New York. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Lee. Morning, Spence. How are you, Missy? Mighty fine. Good. Tell me a bit about you. Getting up at half four in the morning, being jolly. When it when you're the most susceptible time of day, you know, you're like, you, you really, your body just wants to go. Uh, you've not told us much about you there, so we, we, we thought we'd dig up a bit for you. Uh, mm. And you believe you went to Ritz's nightclub in Bolton a few years ago, mm. and uh, you got so drunk you fell down the stairs, <laughs> and you cut your bottom on some broken glass. <laughs> what was the result of cutting your bottom? Didn't you have to do an exam lying <laughs> on your stomach? <laughs> Everybody just goes into work like this and crying. You just. So, it's not you getting up and going, Oh, love, you're right, darling. Oh, what's for breakfast? Oh, can't wait to get into work today. How wonderful. So, uh, quite unnatural, really. How many truncheons has he got? 300. It's higher. 400. Higher. 500. Lower. 450. Lower. 425. 10. It is 410, yeah? yeah. Which means we've got to say this yeah. to Hayley. Uh, goodbye. Bye, Hayley. All right, I'm just have to slam the phone down, though. <laughs> I can't believe it. What are you doing? <laughs> 400 pounds. No. Not tempted? No. 600. Keep going. 601 pounds 50p. Uh, no. 700. No. 750. Uh, no. 800. No. All right, that's my final offer today. You thought I was going to go to like five grand or something. You're joking, mate. Okay, Darren, you've turned <laughs> down. Eight hundred pounds, yeah? Yeah. Okay, for what's in this envelope, I'm going to open it here. You've won. Turned down eight hundred quid. Just imagine what you could have got with that. You've won the fashion...
prize I'll tell you about next, okay? All right, let's keep it on hold just a little bit, because that builds a suspense. All right, Darren. Hang All on, right. love. Oh, the eye in the sky. Building up the suspense just a little bit. Joe Blakeway with Business Pages, the Red Directory, four people at work. Missy, hello. Darren. It is, yes. And you've turned down how much? £1,000. I can't believe you don't just say Spence, I've turned down £1,000. Tell me what's in the envelope. Spence, I've turned £1,000 down. Tell me what's in that envelope. Tell me! <laughs> I will next. I've got and the much hyped and anticipated film Titanic. Uh, Titanic, of course, the uh, story of a, a disaster ridden huge vessel which uh, gets smashed completely. Oh, sorry, no, that's the uh, story of Paul Gascoigne. Sorry about that. Tell me, Spence. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you. You've won the fashion disaster. You've blown it. You're joking! Darren, you get some of my old clothes. What have you done? You turned down fifty. I'm a dead man. You turned down fifteen hundred quid. I don't. But oh, oh, hang on. There's been a mistake. No, you've won. Yeah! 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 Well done. Congratulations. Yeah! <laughs> You're going to be going to New York yeah! next Thursday. Staying at the Paramount Hotel for three nights in the heart of Theatreland, designed by a top designer. You don't care about that, it's just part of the... Uh, coal miner. I worked on the dock. I used to work on building sites. So I used to do day jobs when there wasn't enough money in, in, in rock and roll. Then I ended up in a group called the Salford Jets. Yes! Gina. Oh yeah, I've got a Cortina. Oh yeah, a new Cortina. A man to Cortina. those lines. As you can see, I thought quite a lot about the lyrics. You've got to film this guy here. This, the guy here. Now he looks like a grown man, but he's not. And what he's done today, normally this man wears a Newcastle United shirt with Alan Shearer's name on the back and a number nine. You know when you were filming Sweeney there, and his head, you know, if you put a, one of these kind of pair of tights over his head, it'd be a dead ringer, wouldn't it? For a, for a ram raider or a bank robber. I, I heard that Alan Shearer said to you, bugger off. That is what I heard. I admire him very much as a colleague, but as a sort of, as a human being, well, to be honest, he's a, he's a sad man. Whatever. Because, I mean, part of what my job is to kind of look after the music for Piccadilly 1152. And, uh, all the songs that we play, uh, we know people like. We aim it for people who are between 30 and 50 really, but our main audience is kind of 30 to 45. So Paul Carrick's been with us today and we've been having a chat. Uh, I think music knows where we're at and if you can just do us one or two little bits and pieces. I mean, if you can do us how long, it'd be rather wonderful. No problem at all. Tell me how long has this Welcome, been... welcome, welcome. This is Noddy Holder. We'll kick off the show today with the big GG himself. I didn't know I loved you till I saw you on rock and roll. Keep on rocking! Piccadilly Gold! I thought I'd tape my first link. I remember because it was my very first show, I was doing the overnight show, and I was dead nervous. And we, we didn't have a fader to the mic, we had a, a, a button, and my finger was like that, I was about to go on air, and my finger was doing this. And I hit the button, and I said, Hello, this is Brendan Kearney here, and uh, it's good to be here, and off we go with Racy. Some girls do. Terrible record. Secret is to always have a record queued, or else you think trouble. <laughs> See, no record queued, as usual. Here we go. Come on. Oh. Any advice for DJs? Always have a record queued up. Um, <laughs> your fault. Five seconds there. That's all right. I was thinking, if you're going to have a gap, have a damn good one. <laughs> um, what was I saying there? Five Star. I, I was sitting doing a show, and someone rushed in and said, do I want to interview Five Star? 
So I said, yeah, great, because they were really big at the time. We got them in, and I started chatting to them, and I was saying things like, how do you like this country, and you know, how are you finding it over here compared with the States, and all the rest of it. And it was like 10 minutes like this, and it so suddenly dawned on me that they're English accents, they're from Bristol, or something like that. And I thought they were from Detroit City, <laughs> and I was treating them like Americans. And I just, that awful feeling when it dawned on me that I was making a chump of myself. And I still love it, I mean, I've been doing it since 76 on the radio and I was a, a, a disco job before that, you know, and I never thought I'd be doing it all these years later. There's a new condom that's been developed that has no rubber, it's made of polyurethane. Sounds very painful. But don't forget, if you're going to buy them, don't ask the woman behind the counter if she takes plastic, she wouldn't like it. So I'm quite happy sitting here playing this all day, every day, <laughs> for years, 24 years, 20 years, but I love it. All your favorite songs Piccadilly Gone So here we are. This is the studio where all the professionals do their work. Wow. <laughs> now, I know you know loads about radio. Yeah. But this is the big time, girl, and I don't think a few tips would go on this. And I expect you like all the DJs at 103, but have you got a particular favorite you'd like to learn from? Steve Pink. Really? He's What's so special best. about Steve? He's funny. Oh. I know Steve's in the building, and surprise, surprise, Sally. Who better to give you some tips of DJ trade than Mr. Steve Pank himself? Sally! Surprise, surprise! Steve Pank! How are you? I think you're a bit shocked, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a nice surprise? Aww. Well, listen, we've got a busy, busy day because you're going to do your own Key 103 show. Do you think you can learn all this lot down here? Yeah. Okay, should we go and do it? Yeah. Let's do it. Keep one, oh, three. First of all, we have a CD machine. And Oasis, one of your favourite bands, yeah? yeah? So I think we should play Oasis. So let's put Oasis in there. Can you select track number one on that CD? Okay, that will now cue itself so it's ready to go. Uh, you need these cans. Are they comfortable? Yeah. Right, microphone. Excellent. You're going to play a jingle. Then you're going to start Oasis. Right. And over the intro of Oasis, you're going to read the weather. Okay. And when you finish reading the weather, they're going to start singing. Right. All clear? Yes. Good luck. G103, Manchester. The weather, a cloudy, breezy morning, light rain expected in most places. The rain should die out to leave a bright and sunny afternoon. Slip inside. Listen, I think you've picked this up very quickly, and I think you're ready for your own show. Should we go for it? Yeah. But what are you going to call yourself? Oh. Uh, uh, Sally from the alley? No. Sally, 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 Sally Lawrence? No. Sally Lorette. Listening up for Sally, are you one of three? Are you listening to me, Sally Lorelle? Stick around as I'll be interviewing the new old girl band Spice and here's their new single, Wanna Be. Spice Girls here in the studio with me. Hello, guys. Hey. Would you like to introduce yourselves and tell us a little something about each of you? Alright, I'm Melanie C and I love football. And I'm Melanie B and I'm a northern nutter, so there you go. Mm -hmm. And I'm Victoria and I like shopping. Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm a major nutter, but there's method in my madness. Yeah. And I'm Emma and I love donuts, chocolate and uh, pink. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed the show. This is Sally Laurel signing off with a number one from 1964. <laughs> Anyone who ever loved... Italy Gold, 11.52 a.m. And the face... Hi, oh, I'm Mike Sweeney. Listen to my breakfast show tomorrow and you could win £3,000. If the last two digits of your phone number are in this envelope, you could win. Tomorrow morning, 8.15, tune in to Piccadilly Gold, 11.52 a.m. We're giving away £3,000. Piccadilly Gold. It's dead easy and it could be you. It is... 20 to 8, which uh, means it's 20 more minutes to go before I do my show, move 92. This is the home of Key 103. Let's go in and do some. Follow me. See you later. Here we go. And that's the update at 2 minutes past 8. This is your number one radio station. Okay. Piccadilly Key 103. Q-L.
So there we go, two minutes past eight, move 92 is starting right now on key 103. Throughout this we'll just show you clips of what goes on during a radio show, alright? Good! Piccadilly Key 103, welcome along, move 92 for a Sunday night with me Stu Allen, right through till 11 o'clock, large tunes, large tunes. Easing you into it right up to 8.30, 8.30, the floor filler section where you choose the records. 9 o'clock, the hardcore house hour, the 40 minute non-stop mix in there with the new banging tunes at the moment. 10 o'clock, non-hardcore tunes. Alright, sounds good to me. We're going to pause for a couple of minutes for the news update once again. And in the next hour, it's the non-hardcore section for 40 minutes non-stop. Live from the heart of Manchester on 103 FM, this is the Northwest number one radio station. The update at 10 o'clock, I'm Nikki Harvey. So there you go, uh, the end of another show, end of another weekend and end of another week. It's now just gone 11 on a Sunday night. You don't get air miles, but got the cheat sheet, so road works if we don't get any traffic jams. I'm gonna be late here now. There's the public transport. I feel like Annika Rice. Need my passport and duty free. time of day I'm afraid to say. M62 eastbound that is still fairly bumper to bumper as you come down near junction 17 at Presswich there. That's because the broken down red car not looking too hot on the M63 in Stockport by the pyramid. Chester Road past Old Trafford with a fair few cars but it is okay near Main Road and I do have to say good luck to Manchester City tomorrow afternoon. City centre the hot spots still seem to be around the cathedral and top of Dean's Gate. Not too bad near the lovely Castle Quay and in Salford you really don't want to be anywhere near the Crescent this evening. Those are the views of the queue. E103. Music is in the news. Here to tell us about it is Rob McLaughlin in our Blackburn studio, as you can see. Thank you, Bob. Now, as you know, because Happening Bob knows everything, radio is very popular in England, in particular in this part of England, and in this particular part of the region, the station that's more popular than anything else isn't one that plays the type of music that Happening Bob likes, but one, in fact, which plays golden oldies, a bit, some people might say unkindly, like Bob himself. Well, increasingly, the type of music you hear on the radio isn't being selected by people, but, in fact, by computer. Take a look at this. Time from James at Sit Down, and it kicks off another guaranteed five songs in a row from Rock FM. Good afternoon to you. If you just joined in, it is Red Rose Gold right around the northwest with the memory bank looking at 1969. But they don't realize where you came from. Two disc jockeys, two feet apart, playing two different records on two different radio stations. What they play and almost what they say is out of their control. He has to play it. And if he didn't? Ah, there's the door. And would you go as far as showing someone the door? I'd look at his audience figures first. <laughs> This is Format Radio. A computer printout tells the disc jockey when to play the music, the jingles, the commercials and when to run the weather forecast. Surely you could eventually end up employing monkeys to do this. <sighs> if we could get them cheap enough, we probably would. Inside Red Rose Radio's two Preston stations, the talk is of the marketplace, research findings and audience reach. The secret is Selector, a computer system imported from America. This does the job of producers and some would say of disc jockeys. On the Gold Station, for example, three and a half thousand titles have been programmed into it. 
the computer decides when to play them. Some are repeated every nine days, some every 20 days, some every 28 days. The DJs have little room for manoeuvre. When you spend money researching um, what people want out there, I mean, it'd be quite easy to, to let just one person come on the air and, and ruin that for you, you know. A lot of money's gone into this and, uh, and we're hoping to grab the audience and we're doing it. They are. Red Rose claims that its gold station is the most popular of its type in the country. Our format is, is a heavy rotation of good, strong, popular songs. If it's something that doesn't suit the sound of the station, well, no, it doesn't go on. Selector has now arrived in Manchester and coincided with an improvement in the listening figures for Piccadilly's two radio stations. I must be honest and say I was very worried about it, you know, why a computer could do better what I could do, and I've been doing for, you know, for a number of years. Um, now, we're, we're almost about eight months into it, I, th I think that it's, it's actually quite a good thing, because it's given the radio station uh, a nice consistent sound as opposed to several different sounds which is what we had before. Formatting is no bad thing at all. In other words, I mean by formatting it sounds horrible, but in fact all that means is just uh, doing things the same way so that if, if listeners like something done one way, you don't change it five minutes down the road, you actually do it in a similar way. But I think certainly if you've got personalities, then you should let them work in that framework and, and the, the, the guys here really do that very well. And if you have got personalities? Well, I think you've got to tell them what to say a bit more, yeah. Two new stations are planned for Morecambe and Blackpool and a host of national ones are in the pipeline. With such competition about, computer-led radio is here to stay. E-radio is not what it used to be. Everyone's making the switch to the most music station, Piccadilly Key 103. Key 103 is the North's great radio, with the most music in every hour. Discover the North's number one choice for one great song after another. The hottest hits and the best music mix from the 80s and 90s. Make the switch to the North's most music station. Piccadilly.